And we are live. We are live with our first, let's say, our second YouTube stream. But we're, um, this is our first time doing it on an actual live fire commission. And we have with us tonight, Jack of the Call. Hey, baby doll. Hello, my dear. I, I haven't got any music going in the background. And let me get some music going here. So... Uh. Tonight we are mapping the Age of Antiquity, and we're just we're doing some general inking work here. And I'm gonna actually be making my way out of the North Gate. That's my objective tonight. Let me get some music going in the background here. It may be a bit of a quiet night because people need to figure out that I have moved from Twitch. Mm -hmm. Pex is here, though. Hey, Pex is here whoosh. with the big whoosh. And Pex, how, how, what is the latency like? I've lowered it to ultra low. Well, I guess we're going to find out. Where's, where Let's is my music? Here we go. Got a little bit of music going in the background here. There it is, nice and soft in the background. There we nice. go. Nice. There we go. <clears throat> and Peck says none, yet he said it 10 seconds after I asked the question. So who knows who cares to ponder why? <laughs> yeah, the um, the great thing when you went live, you know, there was the, you're, you're kind of like a splash screen where it was like, you know, you know, waiting, waiting for Alyssa to start the stream and it had your okay. cool, little, cool little image there. Okay. And then... Um, I want to say by the time you and I both started wondering if it actually was starting, I want to say it was maybe like a five to a three to five second delay. It was it was really it was really short um, before it came up and we and we were visible. So at least from my perspective. Well, I guess we're we're gonna find out when the regulars start turning up here. I haven't looked at that uh, Dexter video yet that you posted. Mm. What's it like? Um, it's very short. It shows um, that it's got a song, um, Misunderstood, playing in the background, like a cover of it. Um, and it is, um, it's showing kind of like, you remember when we saw him in the finale of the of the original of the original series run where he's kind of like in like a like a logging area and it's snowy and foresty and yeah it totally like looks like a lumberjack or something yeah exactly so it, it looks like it's that type of area snowy forest and it's kind of going around and again there's the cover of misunderstood being played and then it shows him like um um looking out like he's standing inside looking out of like a window um and he like turns around to face camera and he looks really good and you know um uh, Michael Anthony Hall looks really good, and he um, and he smiles, and you see in the reflection of the window inside the room there, he's got someone on a kill table, ah, and he and he okay. smiles at the camera, and then it, that's it, and so it's it's only like a minute, minute and a half, um, so it's it's really quick, but you know. It, it looks good. So and who, I'm, I'm really hoping this kind of this revival, who knows how long it's going to be, if it's going to be just a season, like a limited series, or if they're planning on actually kicking it off again. Um, I, I hope they're able to to do it good. Do it some justice. Do it good. Good lordy. Do a good job and do it some justice. Well, of course, you, we're not subscribed to Showtime, so how's that going to work? Oh, we'll be able to, um, we'll be able to get a membership through Amazon Prime. Uh, oh, okay. It'll be one of those, okay. you know, okay. sign up for it. It'll be, you know, a little bit a month and we'll watch it and then we'll, we can end it when it's over. Unless, unless Showtime starts having some amazing shows that we want to kick on. You know, that's one of the reasons why, like, we've kept certain things. Like, we've kept, um, you know, Netflix and we've kept HBO Max and we've kept, like, some of these other ones. Well, HBO Max, not so much because we've actually got that through Prime as well. But a couple of these things we keep because they keep churning out good original content that we're like, well, we really want to watch that. So we're going to, we're going to keep on it. So, Disney Plus being another one, at least for me, that's even if there's not an active show or movie going on, I like watching a lot of old reruns and stuff. So, 
Um, and they have the, the you know a, a giant Disney catalog and Marvel and all that jazz. The Disney company owns a lot of property now, so. It's funny how you know you obviously call what you're doing here you're doing it on your on your you know your 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 wacom cintiq and your it's you know you referenced it as inking ink work which is you know that's basically what you're doing but it's so funny because i remember you know back in the days when you used to do everything exclusively on on uh on paper and um you did it all in pencil first um no, actually, that's not true. My apologies. Only certain areas you did in pencil first, and then you did it in pen. But you used to do inking layers straight from the get-go. How much of a relief was it for you when you were able to come to this and you actually were able to, wait a minute, my inking can now be done with potential mistakes? Because before, you used to make a mistake when because you went straight to ink on then. You know, how stressful was it for you when you used to do big pieces? pretty pretty stressful actually um i didn't realize that the wacom or wacom was gonna actually give me any level of um stress relief because i didn't really uh, think about it but um yeah drawing something like uh, uh the coliseum up there at the top of the page that would have been a lot harder to accomplish and that that would have been nervous because i would have had to have broken out like you know a drawing aid for that and probably that i would have done in pencil first at least the outline but then i've got this constant risk of screwing something up and i mean there were a couple of times where i did screw something up on the map and then i have to sort of sit back and think about how am i going to incorporate this mistake into my map now so but that's one reason why I think subconsciously I played safe. You know, I've said that before. Uh, the Wacom allows me to um, take risks. So, right. it, 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 without expecting it, it was actually a huge relief. Without expecting it to be. Nice. Nice. Uh, Peck says, social media blasts have been sent out and also looks like the Alyssa Faden Studios link worked, which is the one I was hoping for. So one thing we're going to have to do is email all of our Twitch subscribers or our followers. Actually, I think we can only email subscribers. We can't email followers. Hmm. Hmm. It's almost like I need to put up a short video on Twitch that tells people I'm now over here and gives a link and just keep repeating that every five days. Right. Right. Noble Dwarf, hello. Well, Noble Dwarf, Anders. Oh, and I actually bought a whole bunch of t-shirts today on Noble Dwarf. T-shirts, nice. a hoodie, some long sleeve shirts. I'm really looking forward to getting them in. Oh, and Noble, I actually uh, got a small package today. Well, actually, it's a very large package, but I've not opened it yet. So thank you for that. Uh, Peck says you can message followers, but it's limited. You can only do 29 a day. Ish. So, what, what, what's that tool for then you know hmm. i guess twitch is like you know, somehow able to get them into you know get them to be subscribers i don't know that's like it does seem very strange i mean i'm small and but i've got what about 600 600 followers so what, right. what is that like 24 days of emailing that's a little that's a little annoying So Pex can't spam all your followers in a single day. Right, exactly, right? How are you, Noble Dwarf? How's it going? Like, now, now your Kickstarter is, what, a couple of weeks behind us? How is life?
I may ask, um, obviously this is the Age of Antiquities um, map that you're working on. Um, have they given you any specific uh, directions that you're able to um, divulge, or has it been pretty much a do your thing and you're and you're then taking it from there? Actually, no. Um, well, you know that they gave me a key, right? They told me key locations that they needed in this city, right? right. Um, so that's the first thing. The next was I did actually ask them about the courtyard. Remember last week mm -hmm. I got some suggestions for how to fill the forum mm -hmm. and they okay. have given me um, their responses to that. I, I basically sent the client like six different options or something, um, okay. including some mix and match. And it, it's a choice. You know, we can either leave the forum completely open and we'll just flagstone it. We can add some merchant um, stalls and the likes there. Someone came up with a stone decoration like walls concentric walls and that type of thing we could make a park in here water feature and so on and so forth and uh, they did they want a they want to have a rostrum and uh, for a public speaker i'll probably put it in the center and then they like the idea of trees and a park and some water features so that's okay. probably where we're gonna go okay Very nice. maybe we'll do Very one nice. or two tents it didn't sound like there's gonna be a big marketplace but they did it, it sort of indicate that maybe some merchants do set up here so we'll probably have a little corner that it's got some tents and things. So I think it'll be a nice little public place. Very nice, very nice. So Noble Dwarf says, um, doing well, just finished the drywall of the house and the last inspection is coming up, so. Oh, nice. I, I keep forgetting that he's such a handy fella. And, and then, Wargaming Recon is here. Wargaming. First time watching this way, feels really weird. Yeah, it, it does a bit, doesn't it? Uh, do beans and all the things from Streamlabs? Why don't you try it after here? after um, Pex gives you your money from the other channel? You'll be able to try it and find out. Ultimately, they do work. Everything works. All of the redeemed things still work. Nice. And we did a test last Saturday, and so we've tweaked on the latency a little bit. So actually, if anything, it should be more responsive than Twitch. Nice, nice. Yeah, and Pex is getting his uh, Twitch handle, so he'll, he should be able to um, send it on over. Hey, the quotes are going in. One shall stand, one shall fall. Optimus Prime. Right, so quote works, but redeem quote does not. Okay, okay. Good to know. Well, I think you only have to do a redeem if there's actually a sound and animation associated with it. Gotcha, gotcha. Actually, Wargaming, when was the last time that you were here? Uh, have you actually seen the progress that we've been making? On the map in general, I'm assuming you mean? Yeah, I, I'm not sure the last time that he saw it. See, that's save. That save, well, that save came through, what, a couple of seconds afterwards? Oh, no, no, that save came up real fast. Time check did not, but is it called time check? Or is it... Is it maybe just exclamation time check? There you go. There you go, Mr. Jonathan. You now have all of your gold. Look at that luscious, luscious gold. Ah, uh, just time. Um, so See, there it is. There it is. I actually think this is faster. I, I do think that this is redeeming much quicker than Twitch did. Yeah, it does seem to it does seem to um, respond very quickly, which is nice. Which is nice. Shoot, that's a bad line. I should actually do a sanity check on my scale here, actually. Um, 
make sure that my buildings aren't too small. Oh, I you know what? I don't know why. I'm just going to turn that off. I keep doing that. Here we go. Okay, so how big are these buildings? Um, I... Uh, you, do my, do you need my Twitch? Yeah, I'm, I'm always logged in on my, my, my YouTube's. Um, do you need my Twitch handle, Pix? Which handle is, um, I believe it's just box office jack. Mm -mm. Sorry, I just, dude, I've got all these alerts over here and I'm sitting here going, yeah, box office jack. That's all. That's one of the things about Streamlabs is it allows you to look up people that have been in your, you know, stream. But you have to get their name exact. It mm. won't do partial searches. It won't do wild cards. It, it seems it's a, bit, it's a bit backwards. Oh, indeed. That's mm. a that's a bit that's a bit unfortunate. Um. So Wargaming asks. Um, so with this being on YouTube Live now, uh, the idea is eventually to unlock super chat and memberships. Yes. I don't actually. I don't even know what's involved behind those, but there may be certain levels that we have to get to. So, but yes. Um, and I do know, if I'm not mistaken, super chats I know are, are always awesome. Those are always cool when you do unlock to that level. I know that um, YouTube takes a bigger cut than like Streamlabs does, but I would say at that point, you know. If you want to send in monies, that's cool anyway. Either way, right? I don't even know what a super chat is. It's basically so if you kind of like how you know how you can donate on Streamlabs, um, and if if you're if you donate money theoretically, it's like whatever you've posted, the person that you donate to will read your comment before everybody else's. Oh, okay, uh, okay, I've done that. I, I have done that. And so super chat is basically the YouTube equivalent where you're based on how much money you do it'll be a different type of color will pop up in the chat it'll be pinned at the top and the the person who's running the youtube will see you know your your chat with the monetary value that you've you've, you've donated um and then they can you know you know give you a shout out as they're reading your question or comment or what have you all right noble have a good night nibbles out of here okay yeah he's got to get back to work he says <laughs> That guy. He's like the breaking bad dude. Could constantly do in home improvement. Nice. It'll probably be one of those um it'll probably be one of those things, Pex, where it'll it'll you know, you'll just have to you know, keep a, a tab or, or a, a log of you know, who still needs their points. Cause it it's, it'll probably be a thing over time, you know? Yeah, keeping track of who you've done it for, I think, would be the best way, without a doubt. Right. Yeah, yep. as opposed to as, as opposed to a list of who you're missing, just keep a, a list of who you've done, because that'd probably be way easier to manage. Yeah. Considering there does seem to be an ebb and flow on, um, on like, you know, on, on, on you know, you know, constant viewers, or sometimes, you know, people will be hitting, you know, like, you know, a solid week, and then you won't, you know, you know, life happens, and, you know, you won't hear from for, you know, a couple of weeks, you know. Brian McWhorter, hello! Hey, Brian's here! Brian's gonna need his Twitch monies. Good to see you, Brian. <laughs> Do you find I, I I heard you earlier talking about your map again? My apologies. Um, the, the star of the show, aside from you, the map. Um, the um, 
you you were doing a sanity check to make sure that your buildings were remaining consistent with one another. Have you found with you know sometimes the scales that you do the the massive scale that that is something that you can you can accidentally lose track of? Yes, yeah, and that's what I was trying to do because you know this this map has such a different scale than usual. You know, I mean, look at these teeny tiny teeny tiny buildings. That if I'm not careful, um, I could be drawing a whole bunch of buildings that are actually too small or too large. Uh, these these are actually about 80 feet in length. Uh, some some are a little bit shallower, but uh, I think 80 feet for a medium sized building that's not bad. That's uh, and remember it could be a multi building building a multi sort of uh, occupancy so to speak. So I think 80 feet's not bad. And I'm going to start dropping in probably some um, villas and the like, some, you know, uh, larger buildings here and there. But I need a sanity check, otherwise I'll just drift one way or the other and suddenly right. find that every building is 40 feet across, you know? Right, right, exactly, exactly. Okay, cool. Because I'm always using the buildings, like, next to it as my sanity. Mm-hmm. It's almost like if you're wrong, you'll just keep going wrong. Right, right. So every now and then doing that check to go, okay, all right, am I still remaining consistent? Exactly. Um, and uh, Wargaming asks, has there been much of a drop-off since transitioning? Well, this is technically the first full live show on YouTube. Uh, Saturday was Alyssa's trial run you know, Saturday morning, it was just for an hour just to make sure everything's, um, you know, was working. So, not sure yet? Still collecting data? I, I, I expect to see a drop-off, though. I do. I, I, I expect that. That's just part of it. You just got to go through that. Right. Until people yeah. are aware, and not everyone's going to want to shift. I mean, look, we don't have Alex Vixen with us right now. Mm -hmm. So people have just got to adjust. Right. You know, and I, I always thought, I mean, you know, like them from a company perspective or not, that's kind of a, you know, that's obviously kind of a, um, um, personal preference as far as like Google and YouTube in and of themselves. But it's kind of one of those things where, you know, they are, you got to admit, YouTube is the you know, one of the biggest video repositories on the internet, um, you know, and it's been around forever. So, you know, it's, it's always, I always find it weird when it's like, how people are like, I, I don't watch YouTube or I don't watch things on YouTube. I don't, I don't, I don't like to support them. And it's like, interesting. I mean, I get not, maybe not liking a company overall, but I've never heard of somebody like, you know, just, you know, not using it to watch things before. And even if it's just, you know, you know clips of things you know either from from movies or you know animal shenanigans or what have you so hopefully you know hopefully a lot of the peeps come over because i don't i don't think any of them were like boo youtube is terrible no i haven't had that um yet i i am i am, I, I think there's probably going to be a lot of people that don't even know that have shifted mm. so that's going to be the main thing right right yeah, because even even you know even you you know saying you know for you know a few weeks you know hey I'm gonna be moving over to YouTube hey I'm gonna be moving over to YouTube it's like either people didn't it didn't twig or they were just going right past them or they just have did weren't happen to be on at the times that you were saying it's like ah oh, darn Uh, War Gaming says, I can understand individuals feeling that way about YouTube. The way YouTube treats creators post adpocalypse is despicable. Hmm. Yeah, and they are, and, and, and YouTube obviously is owned by Google, and there's a lot of people who aren't the biggest fans of Google's for their, you know, you know, business practices as well. So. I, I certainly can understand it, you know, from people who, I mean, I'm not going to be like, well, you know, you're a crazy person for not liking him. I always just go, I'm, I'm that's, that's cool. I, I'm now curious, you know, 
what do you use as an alternative or do you not use an alternative are you one of those people who does not ever view videos or music or things on the internet i don't know Where gaming says for me i focus on certain creators and watch their videos um or once in a blue moon a video tutorial yeah i yeah i think you have you know you know handful of creators you really like their content or maybe you just want to support them you know give make sure they get those clicks making sure they have the view time just so you can give them some support and if they do run ads you know you know sitting through the ad so they can you know benefit get you know get a little bit of benefit off of that i can dig it I'm a I'm a fan of Google and, and YouTube just as you know ease of use personally. So what, what's the thing that ties all of them together, Jonathan, for you? Like, I'm all over the place with the people I watch. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of in the same boat of the, with you, Alyssa, I think. I'm, I'm, I'm way all over the place myself. I mean, I'll, you can, you know, there's a certain percentage of mine that are like of, um, you know, you know, nerdy pop culture-iness, but you know, the, you know, some, or other ones where it's like, where the hell is this all going? Oh, so Wargaming says the um, the common thread is me. <laughs> so it's probably very similar to, to ours, where they're they're a little all over the place, but I like them individually. funny i actually used to um uh, when i used to work when i used to you know have to commute into the office and, and, and work i would actually um listen to i would use spotify and listen to a lot of podcasts on there but um i, f I found that since you know since being quarantined and we're in you know working from home i um I haven't been listening to the audio version of the podcast, but funnily enough, I'm, I'm, almost all of the creators that I follow, they do a, they they, they also upload the it's in sometimes their audio only, and sometimes they do have video, but they actually do release it on YouTube as well, and so I'm like, oh good, at least I can still support you guys and still listen to you guys, so. Um, so let's see. Wargaming says Luke Tawan uh, does amazing model railroading terrain videos. Pink's I know that music. guy. Yeah, I know that guy. Nice. Uh, Pink's music helps me deal with my trauma. The Try Guys are very pro LGBTQIA plus, offering an honest and authentic portrayal uh, of modern male friendships. Film theorists offer interesting and well thought out theories about films. They do video game ones too. Um, Bomb Gartner does art restoration is an e in an easy to understand way. Yeah. Wish I could flip my um, you know, mirror my 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 YouTube. I the, you know the pain being on the the right hand side always makes me look like I'm looking off into the distance. Ba -ba -ba. Well, you're looking at me now. Now well, I'm, I'm looking, looking away. <laughs> no, but if you look, if you look towards your right, yeah, that's looking right. at me. Oh, you mean down in the um, down in the chat over there? Yes. Yeah, there you go. I'm yeah. looking. I'm, I'm looking across at you. It's like oh. I'm, I'm looking back like this. Yes, exactly. Um, I can I can flip my YouTube chat in my YouTube window. 
on in my Zoom? Bex, what are you talking about? What you talking about, Willis? So War, War Gaming concludes with his uh, the people that he the creators he follows that they're all pro creatives in their own way. Oh yeah, no, it's not 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 my not my video feedbacks. I was just, I was talking specifically about the, um, the the chat window in YouTube. Oh, I can pop it up. Oh, all right, I'll look into that. Cool. See, there you go. <clears throat> I see the option. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, thank you. So I was, wa I was watching oh. that locksmith guy um, <laughs> today. Um, yes. That, so it, it, I'm obviously a little bit befuddled by how some of this is even legal. Apparently, lock picking and the tools for lock picking is kind of like a, a big thing. It's a big trade. There's just like there are a lot of people out there that do it, um, and a lot of them post their videos on online. But like, it's the tools. It's the tools behind it that breaks my brain. So he's got this. Uh, I don't want to even call it a key. It looks almost like a kosh, okay? So it's, it's, it's a cylinder about an inch thick, and let's call it, you know, four inches long, something like that. And there's what looks like a key on the end of it. The key takes a photograph or actually shows a film of the inside of a lock. And so you could look inside a lock. And from that you're able to then look at a chart and actually figure out tumbler positions or tumbler types, uh, or I should say the individual components. And from that, make a key that will open that lock. And I'm sitting there thinking, how is that legal? Right. Right. You think that kind of information would be guarded or protected or... I don't know something. And, and he was sitting there, so so this is pretty expensive, uh, you know. It, it's uh, going to be. So I I was thinking that maybe it'd be prohibitively expensive. No, just three hundred bucks. Three hundred bucks, and you could basically just record a video and take photos of the inside of a lock and be able to deduce from that what key to make. I'm like, holy, holy crap! That's crazy. That's crazy. Hey, Princess Trigger. Hey, -o. hey, Princess is here. Oh shit, what did I just do? Apparently I got flummoxed when Princess came in the room. Good to see Princess. But yeah, it was um, it, it breaks my brain. It breaks my brain that this this stuff is just legal, you know? Right, right. Uh as, as soon as you you know started talking about it, both uh both um Brian and Brian and um Wargaming uh knew who you were talking about they were both like oh the you know locksmith lawyer guy the locksmith lawyer that's the fella very entertaining guy short videos just on point very relaxing voice and extremely addictive content but i swear i sit there sometimes going how is this a thing and, and not so much that he can pick locks but the tools that he uses to do it when they're commercially available. I'm like, how how is this commercially available? Yeah, that is that is definitely crazy. Do you see a kitty? Yeah, kitty. Right here. Yep, kitty bum. Are you gonna say hi? In fact, you got my mouse. That's what went on. The kitty sat on my mouse. That's what went on. He does have a Bob Ross voice. Yes, a Bob Ross voice for picking locks. Yeah. 
It was funny, I watched one today. I don't want to make it about, like, picking locks, but I watched one today where, um... It, 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 it was a, um, a lock that you put on a motorcycle brake drum. And basically that stops you being able to use the bike. But when he tested it formally, he basically, he just, just literally just got a stick. Well, it's not a stick, it's a metal sort of jemmy. But he basically shifted it and just twisted it and a whole tumbler came out. So the company saw that he had done this. And the guy's got a big following, you know. So they sent him another one. They were like, oh, sorry, sorry about that. We actually had, you know, a, a bad patch, but we just haven't been able to do a, 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 a recall because, uh, you know, the, of the sales through different channels and, and sub, sort of, uh, you know, shops, etc. Here's another one. And he didn't trust them, so he also went off and bought another one. Mm -hmm. And then he sort of pointed out to them that the, the one that it, they'd sent him looked a little bit like they'd hand-picked it out. So they right. sent him another one. So we had three new locks from these folks. And he was able to do the same with all three of them. Wow. Basically just shoving in what looks like a flat key, twisting it, and the whole tumbler came out. Wow. It's like, wait, uh, wait, wait to shoot yourself in the uh, foot, guys. Bean um, lock. I don't know what a bean lock is. Um. Oh, Strega's pointing out that she redeemed a bean on Saturday. Oh, oh well, we can actually. Right. Well, we, we, can, we can, can each do that. one. I'll um I'll go out and grab one from Alyssa. The um, uh, Wargaming says, would the doors of the buildings on this map use locks? What sort of locks would they use? Oh, Actually, this, did the... did anyone ever see that um, Egyptian lock that I posted to Facebook like a couple of weeks ago or so? Old Egyptian lock. It was basically one tumbler that was about this big. I, I could see them using that or barred doors from the, someone on the inside. But, Especially on, if there's like a merchant or a banker or you know a you know a type of building like that, I could mm -hmm. definitely see that there, there being some locks. But you know, normal everyday citizens, you know, in a in a fantasy town, who knows? Who knows? Yep, looks like Deacon is your assistant. Nice. Come on then. All right, I am going to go get us uh, get us a bean. It was something like three weeks ago, and you know how much I post. I don't know whether Pex will be able to find it that easily. All right, so. Let's uh, let's do our first bean that we ever done ever done on YouTube. Let's do. It. Ooh, that sugary goodness! All right, Jack, you first up. Okay. All right, if there's a white one, you throw it away. Right. Uh, do you need? Sure. Just in case of whatever I get right now, I've got a pink one. An orange one? It's almost peachy colour. Alright, I'm just gonna eat mine right now. I think that's meant to be a good one. And it's certainly not a bad one. But it's like, it's really, really, it's quite sweet. I think it's bubble gum. And that's what I think I just ate, is bubble gum. So not a bad flavor, but not a particularly great flavor, you know? I'm not a fan of bubble gum, and especially fake bubble gum, if that makes sense. But, so it was, it was okay. I mean, it didn't taste like cat vomit, so there's a win. Thank you, princess. Actually, Princess, no, I didn't. I, I purposely chose not to. One step at a time on YouTube, right? One step at a time. We will reintroduce it. Ka -chink, ka -chink. Cheers, everyone. I do actually have a stream deck too, um, and we're gonna start. We're gonna start making these things just way more fun. Just way more of everything. So one step at a time. I, I like gum. Big fan of, of 
regular flavored bubble gum, so I probably would have enjoyed the one that you had there. But I'm a big fan of, of mint gum as well. <clears throat> All right, Jack, you up. All right. Ooh, in Wargaming is doing a heist. Okay. Nice. Forget how to join. Uh, heist. Wargaming, I like my uh, stream deck too, but I've got it plugged into the wrong USB right now, so every time my computer goes to sleep, I have some USBs that go to sleep with it, and it actually takes my stream deck offline, so to speak, so I just need to play around with the wiring uh, to get it dialed in, but I'm liking it so far. Oh, that's, uh, that's unfortunate. All right, so. Uh, my bean, kind of a... Maybe pinkish, reddish, orangish? I don't know. Hmm. It's something fruity. Oh, that's it's good. Like tangerine or... Yeah, I actually think it's a tangerine. Very tasty. Well, double that's, double that's, the goodness. That's a win-win right there. Well done, princess. Yeah. Huzzah. Um, um, Wargaming Double Mint. Um, I, I don't, I don't usually go for Double Mint. If that's all that a place has, I will go for that. But I'll do, like, Trident, or I'll do Orbits, or I'll do, um, um, Extra if they've got it. I'll go for Extra over Double Mint. But I, I t t you know, typically Trident or um, a Trident or um, the other one I just said, and I forgot. Orbits. Yeah. It should be the same game behind the scenes, but maybe moving to YouTube is making it a little bit easier on you folks. But it should absolutely be the same game. Because the, uh -huh. the game is actually run by Streamlab, remember? I, I stopped eating gum of any type when, I want to say I was like 11, 12 years of age. There was some uh, English show that claimed eating bubble gum or like chewing bubble gum and chewing, uh, chewing chewing gum or chewing bubble gum uh, created acid in your stomach and would give you stomach ulcers and I just got so scared by that report and it's probably bogus but I just got scared by it you know and I haven't touched it since you know I could understand that risk it must be if you eat a lot of it because I do know that I mean if I'm not mistaken the chewing bubble gum does get your um I think the acid in your stomach churning because i think your body thinks you're eating something so right it exactly it, and so it gets ready for it. exactly right so if you chewed gum all day every day for a long time you probably will have some you, you probably would result in having some pretty bad ulcers i gotta imagine um yeah it was it was that so i don't even know what show it was now but it had a profound effect on me as a kid. You were like, I am done with that bullshit. All right. That's fair. That's fair. Some people don't like it because of that. Or like, you know, like Wargaming is saying that, you know, it, you, you know, he's heard that it, where it can wear out your jaw, supposedly. Wear out your jaw? Um, what are you that, doing? Chewing a... rocks? What the hell? Um, apparently, whatever, you know, whatever he read up on this says they, um, Wear out your jaw. LB in the chat says, Hi guys, Nikara here. Joined Patreon a few days ago and love the May rewards. Welcome. Hey, that's awesome. Thank you so much. You know, Pex and I were talking about this. Pex is um, my multimedia guy. He, he runs everything. He's my, like my manager. Um, so Pex and I were talking and it's like, I put these rewards together 
and I get so excited by some of them. I really do, whether it be a little glimpse behind the scenes, and I'm talking about a map that the public has not seen, or I'm putting together little components so you can start building your own cities and stuff, or I'm writing a story about a map I've drawn in the past, and I hear nothing. I hear nothing back at all. And it's like, sometimes I just want to sit down and like say, so what do you think about that story? What do you think about the old map? Um, but Pat uh, Patreon, while it's a great tool, it's not great for conversation. So I love the fact that you popped in here and you you said that. I, and that really means a lot to me. Thank you so much. And hello. Yeah, so if, if people aren't aware, by the way, if you're, like, you're not a Patreon or you just haven't looked at the package yet, I've actually started to... T okay, let me take a step backwards. A couple, a few months ago, we started doing video guides, how to draw a map, right? And we're, do we're doing a how to draw a city right now. And we're also drawing this one, the Age of Antiquity, at the same time. So I've got videos sort of talking about how to... But I do a written guide, too, that only patrons get. And as I'm doing this, um, I, I do a deep dive on warehouses, or I did a video over the weekend, which patrons uh, have, which was a deep dive into how to draw um, merchant-like places, like a, a marketplace. And as I'm doing it, I'm like, I could actually... I'm drawing these things individually. If I coloured them, I could actually give them as components. Here you go. Let me, let me, I've given an example and here it is. So I'm actually really jazzed at the prospect of just giving you guys and girls hundreds if not thousands of assets and I'm just going to do map packs. Um, every month I'm going to give you a map pack. I mean we've been doing that anyway but I'm really jazzed about the prospect of giving you city components to go along with the guides that I'm doing. I'm super excited by it. Yeah, yeah LB says... Um... Yeah, keep keep pumping, uh, keep pumping out the vids and content. Uh, they themselves are thinking about doing some virtual tabletop work for indie publishers like Gallant Knight. I met one of them with them a few uh, days ago at my local game store. Nice. That's a uh, that's fantastic. We actually had um, Gallant Knight um, on a couple weeks back. Yes, for their salt wolves of the whale road. Salt wolves? Salt wolves? Yeah, salt wolves. Yeah. Yeah, definitely a good crew. And as a matter of fact, I even bought, um, I even bought, what after, after he was on, I bought, uh, Alan's, this is a Gallant Knight. Pro, pro, product. Can you see it? There you go. Gallant Knight product. After our chat with him. Oh, it was almost there. Come on. Oh, there we go. Tiny gods. Haha, <laughs> it's gone. All right. I, I <laughs> Zoom with a virtual background does not like it when you hold things up. But yeah, after, after you know, Alan of Gallant Knight himself was on our thing it was like you know i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna get one of his books i got the hardback one off of drive-thru it's good stuff <clears throat> Ooh, post a photo on, on on facebook that's actually a good idea Strega. i think i will do that after the stream Strega says, let's see, I can't wait to get my new computer um, after that drawing tablet and guitar. I'm looking forward to digital mapping myself. And then, then she threw some shade at me. Oh, so then she can emulate your style? That's not shade, that's praise. What are you talking about? She could be putting me out of business. LB, oh, not you. So it was Alan? Okay, cool, 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 cool. Huh. <laughs> That's the email address he gave you. Totally, totally. Pro probably was. Alan Alan Barr, I believe is his name. Uh, they're currently doing, uh, LB, currently doing uh, virtual tabletop work for Kobold Press. Oh, uh, Not much nice. time for 3D or indie work. 
for the next few months. So what what are the types of things that you do? Literally, it just in the last week or so, I put some of my stuff on World 20. Nice. That's as close to VTT as I am right now. Yeah, Cobalt Press does some good stuff. Fantasy Ground Conversions of the Adventures. Okay. Okay, that's a lot of work. That's uh, there's a lot to be said for that. Hats off to you. Yeah. Yeah, like you said, if you be, you'll uh, be booked for the next few months. With that for sure. That is one of the things that's you know I, I got to imagine a lot of companies have when they want their stuff updated or converted or what have you, and they want to go through their library. It's like, oh boy, we're, we're going to need some help because we got a lot of, we got a lot of stuff we got to get through. I think Pex was telling me about um, Frog God in the similar sort of light. It's just, there's a massive amount of work to do it. Right, right. <laughs> it's a bit, it packs in as a pain in the ass, yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, it could be a bear editing the maps and creating all the encounters. Oh man, I bet. Whew. But that's cool though. That's really awesome. And, and here's me just getting pissed off at Roll 20 converting my character to their character sheet. Apparently, I don't have the patience. Oh, Wargaming wants to know what are maybe the next two or three pl films I'm planning on watching and why? Um, immediately you know, what, you know what? I know the question wasn't directed at me, but I can't wait till Greyhound is available outside of the Apple store. Yeah, when when they when they I, I'm gonna actually I'll, I'm gonna look that up to see if it's um um if there's any uh, news on that um, because that would be that would be cool you know if it ever you know I don't know how long you know Apple TV is gonna hold on to it if they're ever gonna lease it out to you know to, to to purchase either physical copy or you know have it available to buy on like Amazon or what have you, but. Mm. LB says, uh, keep your eyes open for the Scarlet Citadel, which is coming out soon. And then the Southlands conversion is nice. And then patience, what's that? I almost needed a bottle of Jack Daniels after today's work session. Oh boy. Actually, then, uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt, LB, you, uh, this, this is a long shot, you didn't happen to ask someone to contact me to get a copy of a Cobalt map, did you? Because I had this weird conversation with an intermediary, and apparently someone from Cobalt, or representing Cobalt, was trying to get hold of a map that I had drawn for them. With like labels removed or something like that, uh, you know, it was that type of request, and because it was going through another person, I was like, get out of here! They can contact me directly if they want to. Um, I, like I thought maybe this other person was just trying to mooch your map out of me. Was that you? Anyway, Jack, back to the film. Um, I need to pull up my my as I actually keep a rough list of movies that I've got planned for myself. So let me look up what I've got lined up for myself. It'll take me just a second though. Mm-hmm. 
No, but KP has been looking for some of the old art. Okay, okay. Maybe it was KP. Maybe it was KP. Actually, um, Jonathan, one of my favorite style of computer game is actually Submarine Warfare. And I don't think Jack has ever seen me play it. It's been that long since I've actually played one. But I, I love those games. I got to a point in it where I was beginning to break out like the protractors and everything to calculate my own headings, courses and torpedo angles and stuff. And that was the last I played the game. But I loved them. I it, Like, once every ten years, I'll go back to them. I've been actually, funny enough, thinking only recently about picking one up. Okay, so I've got a couple here. Wargaming. <clears throat> um, I have that I would see. Oh, we've got some some other movie things in the chat. Let's see. Um, Strega is looking forward to Jupiter Ascending coming to Netflix. Nice. And also working on their own list to. Let's see. Hold on. Uh, oh, she's got a she's got a movie marathon coming up, but she hasn't got a self list on it yet. Okay. Cool. 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 Um. Except for Logan's Run. So Logan Run is the only confirmed one on your list. Um, all right. So for me, I currently have a, a rewatch of the Jimmy Stewart film Harvey. Uh, last time I saw it, I was a kid and I don't really remember it. I remember liking it, but I don't I haven't seen it as an adult. So I have to I want to rewatch Harvey. Um, I have the uh, Paul Anderson film The Master um on my uh my to watch uh sooner list my, my to watch list is, is freaking ridiculous um and then i also have a list of films so uh, on facebook every monday i do my monday movie memories where it's i, I you know i'm going back a, a year at a time every week um and i'm posting my favorite films that came out that year um there's actually a year coming up that um i haven't seen and it, this is coming up i'm it'll be a it's, it'll be one that i post like at the end of june you know it's, it's a it's a few it, it's quite a few weeks out but it is a year that i have actually seen no films from that year not a single film uh, 1943 so currently on my list for that i have for whom the bell tolls sahara shadow of a doubt edge of darkness girl crazy the Phantom, Gung Ho, Hi Diddle Diddle, Clancy Street Boys, and Heaven Can Wait. That is so far my short list for 1943 because I looked up a list of films that came out in 1943 and I was like, I, I haven't seen any of these. So, yeah. Holy Scamoli LB, you're a seven days player? Hell yes. That's fantastic. We are as well. A Song of Bernadette. Is that from 43? I will add it to my list. Bernadette. Adding that right now to my list. And a lot of them depend on availability, um, if they can be streamed, if they can't be streamed. Obviously, if I try to watch all of those, you know, and I have to rent them all, you know, that's like, you know, 50 bucks I'm, I'm throwing out. It's like, do I really care about coming up with a list of movies that I've seen from that year? Do I want to spend, you know, 50 bucks to see all these things? Or do I just say, well, here's three of them, and I that's all I've seen for that that, that came out this year. This, this week's going to be a short week. <clears throat> LB says, I'm playing through um, 
the Juarez UK mod while waiting for Alpha 20 to come out. Um, we are we are currently playing the Darkness Falls mod um, with uh, two two different friend groups. I'm gonna make a note of that War Z UK name or something to look into for the future potentially. Yeah, watching Jawoodle got us into um, Darkness Falls. We didn't do any overhauls before then. And to be honest with you, I mean, I'm not, I'm not sure now what Vanilla's going to do to be able to keep my interest. Uh, Prin uh, Pr Princess Breaking Bad has actually been a hell of a lot of fun. We're really, really, really enjoying the show. We just watched um, Better Call Saul last night. The episode called Better Call Saul. So we haven't watched, like, you know, we're, I don't even think we're necessarily halfway through. We've still got a short ways yeah. to go. But we're very, very, very much uh, looking, uh, loving it every second of it. Yeah, it's our first our first run through. Um, first run through of the show. And we are almost done with season two. And yeah, it was the episode, the episode called Better Call Saul that they then named the prequel series. And yeah, so LB on the whole sort of seven days thing, like Jack and I are big fans of seven days, like huge fans. We've got a lot of hours in. Um, but after playing Darkness Falls, even if certain areas lack that little bit of polish, because of course he can't make his own models or do his own animations and yada, yada, yada. It's like he's added so much depth to the game. Like just more of everything. Going back to vanilla, when it's just less of everything and it's easier. Like the core game is so much easier. I'm not even a game that, uh, or a person that loves like, you know, getting like murdered all of the time. Like it's Dark Souls or something, but I want a challenge. And in the vanilla game, you hear, I want to say, you know, day, honestly, after day 21, the game is won. It's just won because nothing can scale to match you. Well, Darkness Falls just keeps getting harder and harder and harder, which I, I like. Yeah, the, the, the after day 21, I mean, depending on obviously, you know, you know what game stage you're in and how many people you have playing, you know, for vanilla. I mean, if, if you hadn't had demos yet, theoretically, you'll have a like the demolition zombies. But as long as you know how to t tackle them, as long as you know not to you know push the button on their chest, you're fine. You've got nothing that's going to come at you that's challenging. So, uh, back on Breaking Bad things. Let's see. Uh, yes, um, the the the, the, uh, the there is that movie supposed that that's like the continuation of the show called El Camino. Um, Strega says she's due for a rewatch for Breaking Bad. Nice. And uh, Wargaming says I want to see Cranston's new series. He thinks it's called The Judge. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what it's called. I haven't heard of it. Uh, LB says, agreed. Uh, where's Z UK rules the mods, I think. Most of them make crafting stupid hard. Oh. It's like Farm Simulator 19. If it wasn't for the modders, the game would be dead. Oh, uh, yeah, with seven days, you mean? Hmm. I actually think that the Seven Days crew, the Fun Pimps, could have been done with this game a while ago, but they kept moving their own goalposts, and they, uh, they they have classic scope creep. I've been in software development myself now for 20 years, and they have their own internal scope creep. They keep changing their own game, and not only that, is they but they see like how players are responding to like fighting zombies or like defending themselves against zombies and they keep changing the rules and zombie behaviors and how things work to try and like account for that and they haven't ever st stuck back and gone the internet will always find a way to break our game that's just the way of it just just do your thing and so it's like they're trying to balance a game 
while they're trying to also develop the game, but they're changing what the game they're developing. And I think they just they just keep solidly moving those goalposts away from themselves. I, I, they're gonna be they're gonna be at least two three years still developing this damn thing. Yeah. LB says the radiated giant demolition zombies are one of the baby tough monsters in Where's the UK. Oh crap. Um. And then going to move, going to uh, shows real quick. Princess is saying that she's uh, currently uh, burning her way through the Gotham series, about halfway through season four. One and a half more seasons, then it's all over. Um, marathoning about half a season a day. Wowzers! And then uh, Wargaming says that uh, he liked Gotham, but then he got partway through and lost his place, and so he's rewatching HBO's Watchmen. And then Strega says that Watchmen is in her queue. Yeah, I, I, I know Ellis and I have talked about it, but that being said, I don't fully remember how she she liked the Watchmen show. I, I, I personally absolutely loved it. Um, I, I would put, definitely put it probably up in one of my top ten TV TV shows. I, I like the Watchmen. I was a big fan. Yeah. And then Pex, I think, asked, you know, have we played the Forest? And we have, um, but the, the forest for me, while I like, I like the graphics, I like the hit, almost Hills of Eyes level of horror that's going on in it. And there's some genuine sort of creepy moments in the game. I don't like how they've balanced um, the attacks. I think they're a constant nuisance uh, to the player or players. I think that the building is, is uh, grindy. It's just too grindy. Um, and too crude for my likings. I like my big builds, you know? I like my detailed builds. Valheim allows you to do that. Seven Days to Die allows you to do that. The Forest will go, yeah, okay, now you've mapped all of that out um, and with a high degree of um, simplicity. Uh, now go and collect five million logs and, you know, 6,000 stone or whatever. And and like each tree is only going to give you four logs and you're like okay so i need to chop down 150 trees it's an okay game okay. I, 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 i've tried it twice now i'm not sure it's ever gonna truly bite on me i think i've probably tried it for the last time I actually tried it with Oliver and gabe where all four of us were playing it with what two or three sessions and then we were kind of like eh. yeah and we've gotten them fully on the um the, the seven days train which is nice that being darkness falls not the vanilla yep 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 so one of the things that gets me about uh, the seven days game is you've okay so let, let's just let's just say for the sake of argument that you want to redo your graphics you want to redo your skins to make better i get that you want to make a better visually good looking game i get it that's cool but what about the performance of the game that's been so par for a long time and even though we are massively now in the future since when they put ground on this thing and hardware was infinitely better it still does these big huge frame drops when th shit spawns in or the fact that you can go up some stairs and then the zombies will spawn in or, or the fact that you had to cut out a whole bunch of content to try and improve the, the performance and it still didn't work what about what about adding more zombie types it's not going to affect anything your core game is still fine what about adding different weapon types that you can find or craft what about just adding like more food types but instead instead they actually remove things. They actually sort of say, you know what? I know we've got red tea. And I know that we've got like the yellow tea or whatever it is. But we we're actually going to remove the effects of those. So you don't give a shit about them now. We're going to remove the effects of yucca now. So you don't give a shit about it. It's like you're you're going two steps forward with your graphics. But you're taking all of these things away. You know, they did this big, huge thing. What was it? Alpha 15, 16, 17, I think, introduced... Uh, mm -hmm. electricity and they got yeah. powered traps and shit like that and then they immediately nerfed all of the traps to the point where you don't even bother with blade traps because they're shit it's like right. guys are you even paying attention you do this big huge thing you put all of this stuff in and then you you basically make it shit while you're working on something else over here right 
Th th this is a team that solidly... I feel the game is definitely better. We joined around 14-6, 14-7. Um, it's definitely a better game than it was. But is there a particular reason why you took out the, the, the spiked traps uh, uh, originally? Is there a particular reason why, you know, you, you've nerfed several key things? Uh, you know? Right. Just leave exactly. that shit in. Just keep adding. Balance shit once you, you're done. Stop fucking about. Yeah. 100%. Uh, LB says, I'll post a pic of the third castle on Facebook later. It's not finished so far, but I'll get, it'll get done eventually. Um, 2,000 plus hours on seven days between uh, playing it on the PC or the PS4. Nice. Nice. I I, I know Alyssa has a, more time than I do in seven days. I have over 1,400 hours in seven days at the moment. Um, and it's, I think, I think it's my high, I think it's my most played game. I think, I think it surpassed Fallout 4. And then LB says, I haven't played Darkness Falls, but I know that the uh, Where's the UK, um, I don't know if it's Where's UK or Where's Z or War is UK. I don't know. War is? Like War is? Anyways, uh, does that. A ton more monsters, more crafting, all around better. Exactly. And you know, I think I think if I'm going to be fair, I think the fun pimps are a little bit unimaginative in some of their design philosophy. Um, and I'm going to honestly, I'm going to put it in Mad Mall's feet uh, directly himself. You know, they've got this good idea for a game, and it's clearly been a very popular game. And it's a, it, I've got a lot of hours in on it, but it, it, they they answer problems with these over complex ways like the whole demolisher so okay let me take a step backwards the cop the cop is a good uh, like zombie uh, it's so much that you really don't want him to explode he's vomiting all over the place it's 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 it's, 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 it's a bad dude he's a bad dude but they bring in a demolisher and they nerf the cop for starters what just leave the cop alone make the demolisher stronger and they put so much love into this demolisher dude with the big huge glowing button and don't shoot it. So players go, okay, I won't shoot it. And you've got to be a noob or like it's just a complete accident for the button to actually get hit. So the demolisher just is a bit of a bullet sponge and you're unlucky if it explodes. Why not just have the, uh, the demolisher run at the player base and explode on purpose? Make him more of a threat. Why, why is it got to be when you hit the button, there's this countdown, uh, but if you shoot it before the countdown finishes, then there's no threat. It's like there's just no threat to him. Yes, he's the strongest out of all of the zombies right now, but it's like he could have been so much more. Right, right. <coughs> I, when they announced that they were bringing him into the game, I was like, this is going to be great. We're going to have these zombies charging at the base, and if they come into contact with it or whatever, they're going to blow them up. Which is cool. I was like, but then they changed it where no, you know, they 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 walk, even if they're agitated, they won't run unless I don't. I don't. I mean, I'm sure there, there's got to be feral demos. I'm sure at some point, uh, and they'll run. I'm sure, but for the most part, they'll walk. And then yeah, if you hit the button and then you kill them before they blow up, it just stops. It's like, well, it's not a kill switch or or a life switch. It's not like tied into his pulse because he's a zombie. He did. So it's like it should still blow up wherever he is. If it gets activated, it's gonna blow up. It's like, what, what, what the heck? I actually like that idea. If it gets activated, the bomb's going off. I, I right. love that idea, and it's so, it's so simple, and it's so elegant. Right. You yeah, know, I, you know what I think part of the problem is. I watched Mad Mole play his own game. Uh, it was granted, it was a few years ago now. He used to actually stream him playing his own game. And he's actually terrible. Like, he's really, really bad. And I think, um, because the internet is not, there are some excellent, really solid players out there. 
watching each other and learning from each other about what to build and how to build and what works and what doesn't. He's not doing any of that. He's building a, a, a wooden box and standing on top of it, hoping that it's going to handle the horde, literally. And I think when he... So ramping up his own game and making it more difficult is basically him just throwing himself naked into Dark Souls. So he doesn't like that. And I think that's holding back some of the, the what the game could be. But I think also when he sees other players, what they do build and how they build it and how the AI can't handle it or zombies can't get through it. I think he figures it's an exploit. And it, so he's got to whack it down, you know. Strega says, uh, the only zombies I don't like are from the movie Steve Niles' Remains. They sleep. Like, what the fuck? Now, do you mean like they literally like go to bed sleep? Or is it like if there's if there's no noise around them and they're undisturbed, they kind of like zonk out and they just kind of stand there and wait around until something shows up? Because if it's that kind of quote unquote sleep, I, I, I personally would be like, oh, that's not so bad. That's like I am legend, you know, when they kind of are standing in the darkness and they if they're not disturbed they don't do anything and if they hear a noise or light interacts with them they, they freak out or but if, if if they literally like oh i'm tired i need to take a nap even though i'm a zombie that's stupid okay no noise undisturbed i could see zombies just kind of zonking out you know, if there's nothing that the interests them, they don't really have a purpose. They just kind of like, there's no reason to shamble that way. I don't need to, I don't need food to sustain myself. I, I'll just stop here and stand around. See, I like that. Uh, it, that, this, that reminds me a little bit of the World War Z book, not film. Although the film wasn't that bad. Um, but it's like the, the, the zombies might just sort of stand there for a long time. Um, but you get their attention, you make a noise, they are relentless and they will never give up. And I love that, never give up, never get tired, they're just going to keep on coming. That, I think, is the scary aspect of a zombie. Right. Right. Mm. I probably have to watch it, dude. Because that I'm not I'm, I don't know if I'm fully getting it. I'll have to um maybe maybe check it out. But doesn't sound like it's if the zombies are are, are annoying though. They but it might not be the greatest of films. But you know, check it out just for the, the the zombie aspect of it just to see. What's everyone's favorite type of zombie? And you could reference a film or a book. Jack, what about you? Um, I, I, I'm a I'm a super big fan of the um, the runners, um, the, the kind of what you're talking about. The ones that are relentless. They don't require they don't require sustenance. Um, they are constant. If you if you attract them, so if you make a noise or have a light or something, they'll come at you and they won't stop until they're either killed or if you find a way to slip them up like you know like you you find a way to you know escape them without them noticing but they'll keep going for you they're the, the the persistent fast rage creatures that don't they don't need sustenance i mean that was one of the things in the like that 28 days later which you could argue they weren't really zombies they were like the infected the infected with rage but um in in that film anyways it was a after a certain point they're gonna starve and die and that's it it's like I, I don't like I don't I don't like my zombies to starve and die. I like my zombies to be they're powered by a, some un, unknown supernatural force that keeps them going forever. Um, I don't need them to be smart. Like I don't need them to be like you know figuring shit out. I don't need a bub or a, you know ones that are like you know it's not like a velocity city of the dead or city of the dead where you know they're able to piece together you know wait, this guy that just ran over my friend zombie went driving in that direction. Wait a minute, I see a giant survivor settlement over there. I'm going to put two and two together. These people that just ran over my zombie friend must be living at that settlement. Let's create a whole horde of zombies to go to that settlement. It's like, no, that no, you're not putting two and two together. Get out of here. 
So I, I don't need those zombies, but I, I like I like fast zombies. I like uh, vicious zombies. Um, I do like the zombies though that um, there's something about them where they're remembering patterns in their former life. I like that. So they congregate towards malls. Or, you know, I'd, I'd love that type of vibe. Right, right, right. Yeah, it, it, I, I, I could dig that. Like, a, it's, like a, it's like a shell of something they used to know. Um, oh, no, and don't get me wrong, Strega. I, I actually love the City of the Dead movie. But if we're talking about, like, the favorite, my personal favorite type of zombie, that would be mine. But, no, I, I think that, that movie is campy and cheesy and silly and stupid. But it's amazing at the same time. I, I freaking love that movie. Yeah, we've seen it at least twice, I think, right? At, at least twice, yeah. And I, I no, you've seen it at least three times because you introduced me to it and you had already seen it before I saw it. And I've seen it definitely twice. So. Uh, let's see. Peck says, personally not a fan of sentient zombies. I much prefer zombies that are instinctual, animalistic. Mm -hmm. um, and once you slap sentience on it, it's kind of lost its charm. Uh, Strega says Resident Evil and Mummy 1999, Super Fast and Relentless. Were there? Oh, I guess there were zombies. I guess that, that I think even in the film they call them as like zombies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You see, zombies. I don't even need super fast for me. And I did. I, by the way, I didn't used to be into fast zombies because um, I'm I'm a, a bit of a Romero fan. Like the big hordes, these just slow inevitable tidal waves that are just going to roll over everything that they come across. I like that. But I do realise nowadays that slow zombies just really aren't that scary. Because um, you basically walk around them. You know? Uh, people even run away from zombies that are walking. You don't need to do that. You just need to walk faster. So... I, I, I'm i beginning to get lukewarm on the whole slow zombie thing. But I still love hordes. Big hordes i freaking love that but i do like that i think fast zombies are scary because you can't outrun them they don't even need to be super fast at that point like the film right. world war z um and where they, they're doing these massive massive hordes that are 50 60 70 100 feet on top of each other and they're spilling over walls i don't think the human body can handle that they would crush each other you know and there'd become a point where just that would not happen but I do love the idea of like where they're spilling down the staircase, even though the CGI was terrible. But they're spilling down and they're fast. You're never going to outrun that. You're right. never going to outrun it. That is scary. Yeah, yeah, and that's and, and to clarify, when I, you, you know, I think you and I are kind of saying the same thing, Alyssa. Is you know the fast zombie. It's not that it's like super fast. It's just it's a zombie that can run, and being that it's a zombie, it doesn't get tired. So it will always be at a running speed. And so you could run as well. You might even be a faster runner, but you're going to tire out. The zombie's not going to tire out. It's going to keep going. Even if it was a, even if it ran half the speed of you, you're going to get tired and need to stop. It's just going to keep on coming. It's going to catch you. It's like, and if there's a horde of them, if you've got like, you know, a hundred, a hundred zombies that are running at a consistent pace coming after you, you're, you're done for. Unless you can get to somewhere, you're done. See, that was always something that stuck with me about World War Z, the book. Um, it was like there were uh, spacemen in space. Spacemen. Astronauts. That's the word I'm looking for. What am I, 12? Uh, there were astronauts on the International Space Station looking down. And they can see a zombie like in the desert or something digging because he'd heard something. And he dug for weeks. He just dug and dug and dug. Because that's the last thing he heard. And he's like tireless, and that, that I I think that that gives me freaking goosebumps. That does, because what do you do with that? Yeah. Um, unfortunately, War Gaming had to peace out. Um, the talk of zombies. He's not the he's uh, not a horror fan. Okay. Um, and so he is he has left the chat. It was it, if, if you ever watch this in the repeat, or if you're still here, it was nice hanging out with you, War Gaming. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. LB likes instinctual animalistic. And then Resident Evil 2, unkillable behemoth. Loved it. Nice. I think it's from the, uh, the, the second, the movie, right? That was the, um, 
Nemesis was they introduced in the second film, which is the third game, I believe. Pex is mentioning a film called La Horde from 2009. And Brian McWhorter says, I like the Emperor Zombie from The Amazing Screw on Head. Never heard of that. What on earth? Looks like it might be an animated, uh, animated. I don't want to say film because I actually have no idea if it's a film. LB, exactly. That's part of the problem that they've got right there in that game. Sorry, Jack. Didn't mean to interrupt you, hon. Oh, it's all right. Uh, it looks like the Amazing Screw on Head was a comic. And I guess the um, the zombie emperor was a antagonist. <coughs> Yeah, so LB, you know you've got something wrong in your zombie game when the, the, the more the higher the level, the less the players are scared. And to the point where you, you get to a point pretty quickly where the players split up and they're just running around demolishing things. And they don't care what is hiding in a house. They don't care that they're all on their lonesome in the middle of nowhere and it's nighttime even. Even the builders don't care anymore. It's at, a, at that point, you, you got to add something, something to keep the scare going on. I have not seen the Hellboy remake. I, um... I wanted to like the Hellboy remake. Um, there was a couple of things about it I enjoyed, but um, I preferred the original two, the Perlman ones. Now, Jack, did you watch this on a plane? I did. That's why you have you. That's why I've seen it and you haven't. It was um. It was on one of our one of our flights back from a convention. I watched it. <laughs> Um, and I really wanted it to be good. They were trying to make it more, um, um, more, um, more like the comics, I think. I think they were trying to introduce more of like the characters from there. Um, but it, I, 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 I wasn't a super fan. Oh, okay, yeah, LB, the Nemesis Resident Evil game was indeed the third one. Yeah, the first one is where they're in the, the, the original Stars team is in the mansion, and then the second game is when you're, you play as both Leon and Claire um, in the town. And I've then, played that one. Um, I think that's the only one I have played. Yeah, I, that one that one is great. Um, and then three is then Nemesis where you're... Um, it, it takes place after... I think it takes place at the same time as two, at uh, a different part of town, but after the events of one. Because Nemesis is going after the remaining star members, as well as the ones that didn't even make it to the house. Um, all right, Princess, book four. Question what? All right, while we're doing that, hang on. Book four, question 69. This book is questions about me. And me is also you. 69. Let's make sure we cross this off so it can never be asked again. Ooh, we've done a 67 before, so 69. Who is your favorite movie director and what's your favorite movie from them? All right. Jack, Jack is definitely going to have an opinion on this. 
my favorite director and it's i don't want to say controversial controversial but it's definitely 50 50 because some people don't like him i love quentin tarantino everything that tarantino has ever done i have adored everything so there's my favorite director now what is my favorite thing from him well that's actually a little bit more difficult because i love all of his stuff so much I think I would have to, you know, I'm, 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 I'm gonna, I, I, I actually like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I really like that one quite, quite a bit. But I think I'm actually gonna do Django Unchained as my favorite. And I think part of that is because, mm, but there was also Inglorious Bastards. Inglorious Bastards, that's my favourite. Followed by Django Unchained. There's mine. Thank you, darling. When you get back, you can give me yours. What about all of you? Oh, Shawshank Redemption. LB, good choice. I don't know who directed that, but that's a damn good film. So for first off, uh, yeah, I'm gonna answer your 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 for you as well, Alyssa. Um, Quentin Tarantino, out of uh, he's not my favorite, but he is one of my favorites, and I, I'm with you in where I've got Inglorious Bastards, Django Unchained, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I even have Pulp Fiction in there. Um, if my if I was going to do my favorite of his though, ah, uh, see that's a toss. Like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Or um, Inglorious Bastards. I might have to do Inglorious Bastards as well. Yeah. Well, who's your favorite director? Um, and actually, uh, Strega, uh, Back to the Future is directed by Robert Zemeckis, not Spielberg. And uh, well, I like actually Jack. While we're on the subject of that, who directed Shawshank Redemption? Do you know? Uh, off the top of my head, I don't know. Um, and Tarantino wrote from Dust Till Dawn, but it was... Um, did he not direct it? No, I think it's Robert Rodriguez did from Dust Till Dawn. Uh, um, Dust Till Dawn is what uh, actually turned my head on Clooney. And, like, I, I, like, I had no interest in Clooney because he was this pretty boy from the, that, like, that hospital show. But mm. I, watched it, I watched him in Dust Till Dawn changed changed my whole attitude on Clooney. Um so Shawshank Redemption was uh directed by Frank Darabont. And um a lot of people know Frank Darabont because he was the showrunner for The Walking Dead when it first started the show. Um as far as my favorite director, funnily enough this came up in a post that I was talking about on Facebook. And in my, and for me, it was like, you know, what is, um, if I'm looking for a director, like what, in my opinion is like, what would I consider to be, you know, a, a favorite director or a favorite anybody is I was trying to look at people that were like every single movie I've seen of theirs. I've absolutely adored from the beginning. It may not be the best film ever, and it might not be a film and it might even have to be a film that i have to think about or debate but like i've never left their movie going i'm not sure i was a fan of that you know that type of thing and one that came up recently which i was like i think this guy might be my favorite director because they've made 11 films i've seen 10 of them and i've i've liked all 10. uh that would be christopher nolan the only film of his I haven't seen was his first film called The Following. Or maybe it's just called Following. I don't think it's The Following. I think it's just The Following. Um, and so that, for me, would be my favorite. Um, and out of his films, it would be The Prestige. It's my favorite film. Prestige is good. Yeah, and that's a good choice, too. McQuirtis says Ridley Scott. 
Memento is a photo finish second place. Uh, like yeah. if, if you ask if you ask me this next week, I might be like, Memento is my favorite Nolan film. Um, you know, I've only seen Memento once, and I saw it what about eleven years ago when I traveled to England, partly on the flight, partly at my mum's house in. I want to say about five different pieces. Wowzers. Yeah, I probably need to correct that. I... What are we doing tonight? <laughs> um, Peck says... Um, um, favorite director, Alfred Hitchcock, and favorite film of his, Psycho. Great choices. Great director, great film. Ooh, Strega, you haven't seen Psycho yet? Uh, I would highly, highly recommend it. I... It's... I, I think I'm with Pex. It might be my favorite Hitchcock film, but North by Northwest and Rear Window are... You know what? North by Northwest? No. Oh, okay, Pex, you got me in a conundrum. Psycho or North by Northwest are a photo finish for me. Um, oh, oh, we'll get back to you, but I'll be in a second. Hold on. Uh, let's see. For, uh, Peck says that for Tarantino, his favorite film is of his is Reservoir Dogs, which is a good one. And then Brian says out of um, out of Tarantino, he likes Jackie Brown, Pulp Fiction, and Reservoir Dogs. Jackie Brown was a great film. Funny enough, the first time I saw Jackie Brown, I wasn't a fan, but the more I watch it, the more I like it. Mm. And that's why Tarantino is probably is not my favorite director because the first time I saw Jackie Brown. I hated it. I was like, this film was terrible. What the hell? And every time I watched it, I liked it more and more. But I don't know if I would necessarily be like, oh, yeah, I love Jackie Brown, or I like Jackie Brown. I'd be like, oh, yeah, and he, he did Jackie Brown, too. Yeah. So that's that's me. Ooh, Strega, you haven't seen Memento either? Oh, that's a good one. They're very different. They're very, very different. But if you have a chance, watch both Psycho and Memento. Definitely, definitely get Memento in there, without a doubt. Oh my god, Alex Gray in the chat. Alex, like Alex Vixen, Alex? Hello! No. No, really? It, uh, Alex is spelled the same way. If, if this Hello. is Alex Vixen, we need to mod her up. And let's see. Oh, you actually own Memento on Blu-ray? Ooh, Strega, that's fantastic. Oh, I don't know the Blu-ray features. If the Blu-ray features are at all like the DVD features, they're a lot of fun. You've actually got to take a series of like tests in order to access the special features. It's actually kind of fun. Pex, can oh. you can you um give this Alex oh, psycho. lady? A lot of loving, please. Can you please mod this young lady up? Oh, okay, you have you have Psycho on Blu-ray. Oh, okay, okay. Well, either way, either way. I don't I don't know how the special features are on, on uh, Psycho. I don't have the. Um. Let's see. North by Northwest is your third favorite Hitchcock film. Your number two is The Birds. Okay. Okay. Wow, The Birds is your number two Hitchcock. Oh, indeed. I'm trying to think if, if, if for me personally, if, if the birds even cracks the top five. Wowzers. I, I, I kind of dig that you really dig the birds. That's fantastic. <laughs> SAS International Spy, Alex Vixen. Yeah, uh, so Pex, I, I, I can't like click on it either. Wait, the, well, there's a the little button, so on. Add moderator. Done. 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 I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep harping on about Hitchcock while you're doing that. All right, let's see. So, Hitchcock, I've got. Wow, well, I mean, Hitchcock's Hitchcock's annoying because he has a bajillion movies that he's done. Yeah, Most I, of them I, terrible. I, I agree. Hate, <laughs> shush, shush you, shush you. Um. But like, okay, Psycho, North by Northwest. My top five would be Psycho, North by Northwest, Vertigo, The Man Who Knew Too Much, Rear Window, oh, Dial M for Murder, Strangers on a Train, Rope. Oh, 
holy god i i don't know I, if i was gonna do if i was gonna do a top five list that would be really hard for me to do i'd have to i'd have to like rewatch them all and like you know give myself some sort of rating system Oof. so many good ones so many good ones Uh, I, I, I kind of, <laughs> I know, I know Pex is rampaging over there, but I, I think I agree with you, Strega. The, uh, the birds is, it, I haven't seen it in 20 years, maybe, maybe 15. Um, but I, I, I don't remember it being as intense as it was implying. The implication was way more intense than the, uh, than the actual feeling, the sensation. <clears throat> but, for, it, the birds would still be in my top ten. Hitchcock films. Faux shiggy. So what about you, Alyssa? I, I, I mentioned uh, uh, Nolan. Do you um, have a favorite Nolan film? Or perhaps a favorite Hitchcock film? I'm not sure how to answer that. Because in all truth, most directors I don't follow, you know? So it gets to a point where I'm not even sure what they've done. So I'm a bit of an ignoramus in that respect. Uh, and Nolan definitely falls into that category so i just end up like mentioning a film that i happen to remember as being his well it may mm -hmm. not be actually the film that i like the most and yeah, hitchcock yeah. hitchcock and um, if i never watched a hitchcock for the rest of my life i'm okay with that it, it just doesn't do anything for me no totally totally i can get that i can get that yeah you know funnily enough i was thinking about uh dunkirk the other day because I was looking at Nolan's filmography, and I was like, "Oh yeah, cool. I like Dunkirk. And I like I like off, walking off like a boss. You know, it's kind of like you know, it's would I consider it a favorite like war film? No. Would I consider it a favorite Nolan film? No. Would I consider it a favorite uh, Tom Hardy film or a Kenneth Branagh film? No. It's like I like the movie, but it would never make a top list of anything. Of, like, any give, me, give me some more of his. Uh, so he did the Christian Bale Dark Knight trilogy. Yes, of course. I, I, that is probably the only one I know. Did he do The Machinist? No, he did not do The Machinist. All right, that's um, fine. He did. So those three, uh, he did um, Memento. He did. Oh, he, he did the Al Pacino Robin Williams remake of the foreign film Insomnia. Uh, Hilary Swank was in that as well. All right. Did you ever see that one? No. Um, Al Pacino is a, is a, is a cop. Um, investigating the murder of a girl and uh, Robin Williams is the prime suspect. It's very interesting. It's very interesting. The original was okay. I actually think I prefer the, the Nolan remake of it. Um, let's see. Dunkirk, like I said, he did. Oh, he did Tenet, which we saw recently um, for the first time. Uh, he did Interstellar um, with um, Matthew McConaughey. Uh, he did um, Inception. Oh. Inception's, Inception's good. Inception's I like Inception. It's a really good one. Like, all of these films are good. I don't know, like, if any of them are, like, knocking me out of my seats. Um, but, yeah, Inception was really good. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's it. I've actually pulled up his filmography. Let's see. Following came out in 98. That's the one of his I haven't seen, so I couldn't even tell. I, I don't even know what it's about. I couldn't tell you a thing about it. Uh, then Memento, Insomnia, Batman Begins, The Prestige, The Dark Knight, Inception, Dark Knight Rises, Interstellar, Dunkirk, and Tenet. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's it? it? That's all of the list? That's Eleven movies. That's all he's done. All right. Out of that I list, I think I would have to give it to Inception, to be honest with you. Myself. That's a great choice. That's a great choice. That that's I I believe if I'm not mistaken that's my number four because Dark Knight I I love 
that's like my favorite Batman movie like ever. So it, it gets bonus points because the Joker, Heath Ledger's Joker in that is amazing for me. But it's like if you take out Heath Ledger's Joker, it's just an okay Batman movie in my opinion. And so then Inception definitely is my number three slot. I love that you love Inception so much. Like out of those, like you're like, yeah, that one out of, well, not that you love it, but the fact that out of his movies, that's my favorite. I love that. that that's the one that would take it. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Um, Peck says, Jack, if you want a kind of nod to the birds, Lou Diamond Phillips's Bats is charming. And Striker comes in saying, I love Bats. Oh, that's 1999 Bats. I'll have to check that out. That's awesome. Ooh, yeah, Strega, The Bone Collector. That was a great movie. Uh, Denzel Washington and Angelina Jolie, right? Oh, who, who directed that movie? But that was a fun, that was a fun movie. Did you ever see that, Alyssa, Bone Collector? I have definitely seen The Bone Collector, yeah. I can't even remember anything about it. Nope. <laughs> I love that, um, I love that, like, it, it's, it's, it, you know, it, it um, Denzel Washington's like the he's the hot shit detective but he's freaking paralyzed and he's in a he's in his home the whole time and Angelina Jolie is like the rookie detective and he's basically you know channeling himself through her and she's using her own instincts with his knowledge it was I remember it being a really really good so Alex says Bats has one of the best oh shit moments in movies maybe we'd have really? these to get on our list Jack there's a lot of people talking about this Bats movie. Bats. Okay. You know what? I'm, I was going to write it down on my little post-it. No, I'm just going to fire up my... Yeah, I'm get it Get it on our my... list. Jack and I yes. actually have a list of movies that we want to watch. So, like, typically over the weekends, we do watch something. This is going on it. Bats from 1999. And it's on it's on Prime, so that's going to be fantastic, though. That's great. Thank you for the suggestion. Every everybody commenting on it. Uh, let's see. The following was oh yeah, and I, and I think there's a difference between following and the following. I think the following is a TV series, but the Christopher Nolan following is a is a completely different thing. So, Princess Strega, Jack has notebooks. Jack has a lot of notebooks. Jack doesn't like to write in his notebooks, for the most part. So he either has a Google Doc, if he really needs to keep it, or he has post-its for just little day-to-day -day reminders. But the notebooks, yeah, they're on a shrine. They don't get used. Because it's one of those things where I, I love notebooks. I even like crummy notebooks. Notebooks that are just like, it's just it's just a crummy little notebook. But I love the fact that I have all these pages for something. And I don't like using notebooks that are going to be multi-subject, if that makes any sense. So I want to like, I want to have this notebook for one thing. But because it's going to be dedicated to one thing, I want to hold off until it's going to be that one thing I'm going to want to use that notebook for. And I ever never ended up having uh, that one thing that's that, that thing for the notebook and so that I don't, I don't end up using it. It's a hurdle I got to get over. I'm the same way though, Jack. I mean, I, so I can actually honestly really appreciate where you're coming from. I've got some notebooks that are so nice. I never want to write. What am I going to put in this notebook, you know? I, I have one that from the outside looks like it should contain illuminated images, like an illuminated manuscript. It's got like the nice leather bound... It's got the gold embossed. It's got the nice binding. It's got the thing. The edges of the pages have that gold tinge. When you open it inside, all of the pages are like immaculate. I'm like, I don't want to freaking write anything in this thing. This has to be something amazing that I put in here. This this journal is way too great. So I, it's in a box somewhere downstairs because I'm never going to freaking use it because it's too nice. And Strega's with us on this. Thank you. Thank you. Ooh. Because we're talking about Bone Collector, Pex is now saying he's now trying to decide his favorite Denzel Washington movie. Ooh. All right. Well, and hang on. And hold on. And real quick on that. We got to go back to Strega. Because, Strega, you said that you like Spielberg 
and Back to the Future, we need to clarify who's your favorite director and then what's your favorite one. So if your favorite movie is Back to the Future, or at least if it's up there, maybe Robert Zemeckis is one of your favorite directors? Or is it Spielberg and there's a Spielberg film that you really love? And then Denzel Washington movies. Can I be a little controversial? I'm not sure Spielberg's that good. I... Like, fight me. I think Spielberg was a product of his time, and I don't think he's managed to grow with the times. I want to say that when Spielberg was younger, he was amazing as a director. Um, and I do want to say... I don't know if it's necessarily that he like wasn't able to grow with the times because a lot of his films were kind of timeless but the films he started doing later in his career in my opinion were either lazy or boring but that's just me i think i think i think we're kind of saying the same thing where he definitely was his early career he got it and then as he grew older he just kind of he didn't update how he how he told his stories his style and princess so I, think I think that's what i'm saying exactly like the 80s 90s spielberg yeah all right mm. i'm not even sure yeah. most 90s but yeah all right but um anything after no no he's not done anything special in the last 20 years Oh yeah, for sure. Last twenty years, I think I'm 100 percent with you. I don't think, I don't think he has. Nineties, I would say he has, because that's when like Jurassic Park came out, and Schindler's List. Schindler's List, fair dues, fair dues. You know, maybe maybe early 2000s, because I was a big fan personally of Minority Report, which came out in 2002, and AI, artificial intelligence, which came out in 2001. Um. And but like Brian McWhorter is saying that he admitted that getting older and having a family has changed his style. Okay. Okay. Saving Private Ryan and Band of Brothers were great. They were great. So I'm probably dissing on the guy too hard. Because it, 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 the stuff that he's done, let's say pre-2001, there's been a lot that I've really dug. Yeah, um... What was it? Okay, so Private Ryan was 98. Amistad was 97. Uh, see, Lost World Jurassic Park, that was the second Jurassic Park film. That one I eh, thought was, eh. was crap. Catch, oh, you know, Catch Me If You Can was 2002. That one was good, too. Yeah, that was a good film. Um, now, I heard The Terminal was good. Now, I didn't see The Terminal. That's the one about the real-life one with Tom Hanks, where he's a guy that's stuck in an airport for, like, years I don't think it's years I thought it was years what a guy is stuck at a terminal for years yeah yeah he is stuck at the Paris uh, the Paris Charlet de Gualou airport in France from 1998 from to 2006 it's a real what? life guy yeah I thought Nefran... it was like a couple of months or something or maybe no, a couple was... of weeks no, it, it was it was it was years, and it was for some weird. I don't know the full story because I never saw the film and I never looked into the incident. But it was something weird that happened, where it's like he couldn't leave the airport yet he couldn't fly anywhere, and I think it was for legal reasons or passport reasons or something. But no, it was eighteen years. This guy was stuck in this airport. That makes no freaking sense. That's nuts. That is nuts. That's prison. Nicer, granted. But that's just crazy. Right. We might need to watch that now. I will add it to the list. Oh, Wargaming. Welcome back. Welcome Catch back. me if you can. Terminal, Lincoln, Bridge of Spies, The Post. Okay. Okay. I, I wasn't a fan of Bridge of Spies. And Lincoln is one of those movies that I appreciated it, and it was fine, but I wasn't blown away by it, personally. 
What game are you talking the... favourite directors and why? What films have they done that you really like? When Princess said earlier she had to change her director to John Hughes. Yeah. And that Uncle Buck and Planes, Trains, and Automobiles are two of her favourite all-time movies. I love John Hughes. I'm with you 100%. That's... He might be one of those directors that I'd, I'd probably have to look to see if there's any of his that I didn't like. Mm, 16 Candles hasn't aged very well. I, I haven't watched it in its entirety recently, but I've seen clips from it relatively recently, and I was like, oh, no. Oh, I don't think I like this movie. It's real problematic. Brian McWhorter clarifies with the terminal, the care, the the act, the person, because he's he's a real he was a real person. His passport wasn't valid anymore because his country no longer existed. Interesting. Huh. That's just nuts. That is just nuts. And Strega says on a, on, a, on a different standpoint of the whole thing. She has no interest in rewatching the terminal ever again because it was a boring movie. Okay, okay. And that she recently watched Catch Me If You Can. Love that movie. Hell yes. Yeah, that's a great movie. That's a good movie, that one. Tarnished Night. Most modern films suck. That said, Crawl was brilliant. You glad? Alex dragged you to see it. Ooh, is Tarnish Knight, are you Kaifer? I think it must be. I think it must be. If so, that's a great handle. Tarnish Knight. That's a great handle. Uh, Crawl is one of those ones where there it's not a apocalyptic scenario, but there's like a giant storm or something, and that's the one where like the water level rises in this town and like the crocs come in, right? And start harassing the town. The crocodile one or alligator one. Yeah, and, and Wargaming, you might not have been here when, um, I think it was Brian said it in the chat, but Spielberg, I guess, had said has said in interviews that as he's gotten older and he's had his family and all that kind of stuff, it definitely changed his his storytelling and directing perspective as well. Um, just throwing that out there. Hey, Kefir, it is indeed Tarnished Knight. That's a great handle. I love that handle. <laughs> yeah, let, let, Strega says, it reminds me of Lake Placid. Great movie, the sequel's not so much. Lake Placid's one of those guilty pleasure. It's like, the, I acknowledge the movie is really dumb, but it's so much fun. I, I love the hell out of it, but it's, it's such a... From an objective perspective, the movie is really dumb. But from a subjective perspective, it's it's so much fun. It's so much fun. Let's be careful of staying away from the horror flicks, though. Too much. We've already done that. Scared away our war gaming. <clears throat> Betty White unpopular opinion. I'm fine with Betty White. I could care less. I, I think uh, Betty White uh, it, it has managed to become a little bit of a cult, you know, a cult classic, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like just modern culture says, yes, Betty White is cool. Ergo, you have to love Betty White. Right, right. Well, and it's the same thing with uh, what was the show that she was on that everybody loves? Golden Girls. Golden Girls. But Thank Golden you. Girls was cool. Was it? I, I I wouldn't know. I love Golden Girls. Yeah, it, it's one of those. It's one of those ones where it's like I I missed the train on it, and I've had little, little to zero interest to ever try to find anything about it. 
And what I have seen on it, I've gone, eh. But apparently I'm in the minority. Tarnish Knight says that it's a Soth, Lord Soth reference. Big points for Lord Soth. My apologies, because I am not um, up on Dragonlance or Ravenloft, I had to look up who Lord Soth was. Oh. Uh, two, two campaign settings that I'm not familiar with. Um, Dragonlance, I've never read or played in those. Mm, no. Mm. Two years ago, at a convention, I played uh, basically Dragonlance Episode Zero. Um, and, yeah, but that was shit, Jack. You, you can't judge right. Dragonlance on that right. particular I'm, I'm, experience. I'm, 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 and, I'm, and I'm certainly not judging it, but that has literally been my only experience. And, and my only knowledge of Dragonlance was that game. I, I don't have, I know nothing about Dragonlance. And then Ravenloft, Alyssa is going to make you cry. We have a dear friend of ours who has been my only introduction into Ravenloft. And um, I don't think I'm getting the full extent of that either. So... No, I want to run Ravenloft for you. I got to admit, Lord Soth looks freaking cool as hell. Lord Soth is very cool. He looks like the Witch King leader of the Nazgul. I'm digging that. I'm digging that. He's not a faceless NPC either. He's got something going on. Nice. Nice. Betty White versus Ryan Reynolds. What the hell? What? Did she face off against Ryan Reynolds in something? I didn't know that there were 70 Dragonlance novels, LB. I might have said there were 12. Lord Soth would snap the Nazgul like twigs? Whoa! Whoa! Fighting words! She faced off. Okay, she faced off against Ryan Reynolds. I have to look that up. 70 plus Dragonlance novels. You know what? I'm not at all surprised, though, because certain IP, once a publisher got their hands on it, they, they hired authors and they churned those things out. I am not surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if there was over a hundred Dragonlance books. Well, the ones, because oh well, I suppose LB said seventy plus, so there could be. I'm gonna shut my mouth. I was gonna say you threw a lot of shade at me when all I was saying was I wouldn't be surprised if there were over a hundred. <laughs> Those are fat words. <laughs> I'm just saying. <clears throat> Oh, I know that we're going a little bit long on the stream here, too. I was just trying to get some of these background areas filled in a little bit. Holy crap, Pex came out with the actual number. There's 152 Dragonlance novels. Holy shit! What? Holy crap! All right, I never oh, would have guessed that. I could I could have had 152 answers and not come up with 152. Holy heck. Uh, let's see. I did not. Let's see. Strega, you said, not a fan of Dragonlance, but my favorite campaign area came out of it. The box set from Time of the Dragon. I don't know if I'm familiar with that one. Let me look it up. And I know you were doing a time check on this. My apologies. That's okay. We've definitely gone. Oh, we have gone long. It's been a two hour stream. Wow, that time went really quick. It's been two hours, really. It's been two hours. If you told me we've been hanging out for an hour, I would have believed it. Well, we have, but double that. Well, okay, yeah. LB is saying that the Wikipedia says that there's over 190 Dragonlance novels. Princess, amen right. to that. Yep. All right. 
So let's recap what we've done this evening on the map, shall we? What have you done tonight on the map, Jack? I have done nothing on the map other than look at it and appreciate the craftsmanship. Um, so a couple of things I did on the map tonight. I, I, I kind of connected the forum area to the main north gate. I kind of wanted to kind of get that area sort of blocked off a little bit. I don't normally draw my maps like this. I normally do them neighborhood by neighborhood, but I'm a little bit concerned that my buildings will start to drift out of size. So I'm trying to keep myself honest by... Um, really getting the roads done and then doing a little bit smaller in those sub districts behind off the main roads themselves so i did that we've got them connected here some larger buildings there out into some smaller buildings right here and then off into the forum itself i think next time so tomorrow night when we do this what am i going to draw next i think we're going to concentrate on this road where you see the word 50 and we're going to actually go past the Colosseum up in towards this temple district. I think we might mark that off. I think that might be a good idea. That we will be doing tomorrow night. I'm going to be doing this as a series of just blocking areas off a little bit like a quilt. You will see these blank areas in between. I will finish them off camera or just to warm myself up prior to a stream. The objective is for this city to feel like there's 200,000 people living here. So I need to do more of this type of building size than this type. So I always need to sort of come back into smaller buildings just so it has that huge volume feel. That's what this city is going to be about. Huge volume of buildings. It needs to feel almost claustrophobic. And Jack definitely did a bean tonight. Been a good first stream, proper stream on YouTube. Let's just keep doing it. And it's quick latency too. This is really good. We got our games back. We got our question time back. We'll make this work. We'll make this work. Everyone, I love you very much. Thank you so much for hanging out with me tonight. A couple of new faces, a couple of very familiar faces. Really do appreciate that. If you could help me with this move, it's hugely, hugely appreciated. I, I, I mean that. The whole objective is I've got all of these other videos on YouTube. We want like one place, one place where you can find me. If I was playing games and everything, Twitch would be a great place for it. The likes of um, Princess, you've got a few months subscribed uh, to me. We will look after you. If Even if I occasionally reappear over on Twitch over there playing a game or something, I'll make sure you're looked after. With that said, I am back tomorrow, 5.30 Pacific Standard Time, here on YouTube. Hit me up with a subscribe if you haven't already. And maybe ring that little bell so you get notifications for when we next stream. 5.30 Pacific Time. I'll see you then. We're going to be continuing to work on Age of Antiquity. Until then, everyone, have a great evening. Good conversation. Always very good company. Jack, thank you. You're most welcome, my dear. See you tomorrow, everyone. Have a great evening.